Hello, today we are going to paint uh, Stony Brook Harbor and um, as you can see in the inset picture uh, we are trying to just mass in the clouds, right? The, actually the sky which is kind of like a hazy sky. Uh, the paper was wet, I'm working wet into wet and I'm adding um, just alizarin, I'm sorry, uh, ultramarine blue and cerulean blue to the sky as you can see the obviously the top you know, or, or the those shapes sort of represent the the foggy clouds and the bottom represented the um the water and here is the same thing dried so now i'm going to start with the distance now you can see uh in the inset picture that we're having like a small distant land mass and we want to start with that first uh, that's a sap green and cerulean blue and we're going to get darker as we proceed to the foreground all right now i felt that was a little too dark and saturated so i just patted it out with a little paper towel um, and now i'm getting a little green i had a little bit more green a uh, tiny bit of uh burnt sienna to get more of a warm green so that distinguish itself um, in front of the distant landmass which was the cerulean blue and bit of sap green so there was actually i know you could barely see it but all the way up on top of that uh, tree mass on the left uh, there was a little i don't know i think it's a castle or just a big mansion up there um, overlooking the harbor um, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to start adding big masses of the tree mass. And I'm going to start with um, basically a, a mixture of warm and slightly cooler greens. So the sap green is the uh, pretty much the predominant green throughout this painting. But here I added yellow ochre. Uh, I think there was a little um, burnt umber in there. Um, you can see as it starts to get green, like I'm just going to be adding more and more uh, uh, saturated um, values and color washes over this. So now when you get to the edges, what you want to try to do is you want to try to get just a very uh, loose, uh, broken up um, tree line. Um, that's just going to represent trees breaking the skyline there. You can, if let's say you feel that the, um, the landmass is too much of a, you know, a perfect shape, uh, here it seems to be like a little bit of a slope. But that's the way it looks uh, if you were standing there at the parking lot of the, uh, of the harbor. Um, you can always change it if you feel uh, that you just don't like the, the, the aesthetic shape. You can always... Um, make the uh, the tree line a little bit more interesting but here we're just trying to stay close to what the shapes look like trying to do like a recorded um, version you know uh, we're trying to observe what we see and paint it um, this video is actually um, a video that I used for uh, a watercolor workshop which we went to Stony Brook Harbor and we painted these uh, we didn't paint this exactly. We painted the inside. Um, there's another, uh, in fact, there's places all over uh, Stony Brook Harbor that are just beautiful to paint. Um, from what I understand, it's one of the most painted places uh, on Long Island, and that's New York, for those of you who are not local. Um, it's uh, just, um, just a beautiful place. What, they, what, what's, what attracts artists are those land masses so now um, as you can see my trees I put in a little bit of the grass uh, or the reeds there um, that was basically again sap green and yellow uh, actually cadmium yellow to get it a brighter yellow so you can see the versatility of just one green uh, and I'm like sap green is kind of on the warmer side anyway so it's closer to neutral um, there are other greens you can use, obviously. You can use Viridian, you can use Hooker's Green. Uh, permanent Green is a little too bright, like straight out, 
but you could use hooker's green the only difference there is you just have to warm it down a bit more so there you know if you don't have sap green um, don't worry you can always use another green you can actually use viridian green but you have to make sure you use a lot of warm tones because as you people know who painted before viridian green is very metallic um, so it's going to need to uh, be warmed down considerably so what i'm doing here now is i'm trying to shape the tree i'm trying to give the trees some shape and you're going to see every once in a while that i'm going to take the spray bottle and i'm going to give it a little spray the reason for that is that i want my trees shapes to kind of blend a little bit i want them to have softer edges so this is a way that I can ensure over that first wash that my edges are going to be softer. So there you go. So the little spray, that's all you need. Um, just a tiny bit um, and then start working in your darks. So basically that's what I'm doing here. So I'm basically what this is called, it's, um, I'm painting in the negative. So you'll see this that tree that's defined on the probably right here right about here where I'm painting now um, where it has a canopy that's a little warmer uh, this picture was taken more than likely around noontime uh, the shadows are coming from the top down so the top of the the tops of the trees obviously will be lighter whereas the bottoms of the trees will be darker Okay, so that'll give us, you know, the illusion of, um, of depth and, uh, and form in the trees. So there we go. A little bit more water. Um, again, to soften the shapes, to make them look less intense, less hard, less contrasty. I want to save all my hard contrast for the foreground. Uh, when we get to start painting in those little rocks in the foreground and also the... Um, you know the weeds and the reflections of the uh, eel grass or whatever the, whatever that growth is in the foreground i want to just make sure that i have a, a good um a good strong contrast in the front and uh and you'll see as we move over to that area so here i'm trying to draw some um different shapes here and you can see it's, it's starting to shape up the background. I'm adding some really deep darks right in here. Um, the reasoning for this is obviously because now the lights, um, the shadows are on the bottom. So we really have to push up that feeling that the shadows are lower. And just by giving it a little spray, it just softens up my, uh, my, my paint uh, strokes. And, um, and you, you can see we just keep working that... Um, those colors in one by one um, could you use a bigger brush for this probably but I want to try to get sh I'm trying to shape the trees up just a little bit more so they're just basically masses so here the the background is pretty much done again I spray a little bit more um, I might be, I might go back yeah here I go again so now you see I'm really trying to get a very soft edge there so I'm spraying almost like every every brush stroke to guarantee that the, that those um, that those marks I put in are going to you know just blot out and, and, and blend into the background what's what's interesting about this it doesn't make your uh, wash look overworked because the um, that wash that we're putting on top is just dissipating into itself basically it's blending into the previous uh, washes so it doesn't really doesn't look like it's overdone it just looks like it has nice soft edges so you know with watercolor you have to learn how to manipulate uh, and get the effects of what's happening in nature um, that I find is the best way to get softer trees now if I was working a little close up yeah then the trees will more than likely be more hard-edged and more contrasted um, but here they are in the mid-ground we still have a foreground um, yeah we still have the foreground to paint obviously but um, we want to try to keep everything um, in that dark to light dark in the front our shadows are going to be strong uh, maybe a little stronger than they are in the mid-ground and then obviously those tears 
of landmass in the back already give us a sense that they're in the distance. Um, all right, so I'm still adding some more texture to the landmass. As you can see, I did it before. Um, that one first wash was my brightest yellow green. So now I'm just adding a tiny bit of warmth and I'm just adding a little bit more um, just shapes, just basically through, you know, singular uh, horizontal brush strokes. But they are staggered. They're not straight. They're they're thick and thin, as you can see, almost the way I'm painting in the uh, the water as well. So here's the embankment. Now there's a little bit of, um, uh, as as you can see, there's the the, the weed line uh, has some volume. It's it's large, so I'm trying to paint in that feeling that there's a little bit of substantial growth on top of the water line. So that's what that darker green line is. So here I'm, sp I'm spray uh, spraying some water. Uh, I, I want my edges to be slightly soft because this is going to be the background and I don't want these hard edges to compete with the, um, the hard edges that I put in at the very end. I don't want that to, you know, uh, interfere. So that's why I'm just painting and I'm, gonna try, I'm trying to go dark where I need to go dark and, and lighten up where I need to lighten up. But for the most part, it's very soft. So I'm trying to just create a structure of value in this wash to build on. So basically, and again, this is sap green, and I think I have a little burnt umber in here. Um, the darks are more than likely burnt umber, ultramarine blue, and the sap green. Um, and the reason why I use the ultramarine blue and the burnt umber is because it darkens the sap green considerably. Um, blue and burnt umber uh, which, you know, when you think about it, that's red and blue is going to make a, a green, but it's going to make a green at a very low, dark value. So now we're moving on. I'm leaving, notice how I'm leaving a little light coming through. I'm scrubbing a little bit from underneath. I'm taking my a paper towel, wetting it a little bit, because um, there are some highlights on the rocks, and I want to make sure that um, those highlights... Uh, are, are there so that I can paint my higher values on top. So in situations like this where we did that gradation, you can almost see like, like a little bit over to the left, um, probably about like a quarter into the painting from the left, there's that little mark. Well, that's not a mistake. That's actually, I blotted out um, that light because I want my rock to have bit, a bit more contrast against the blue, or at least, um, the color of the rock would have been tinged by the blue. So that's why I pulled off some of that color. So you, at least now you can see that um, as I go back in there. So it's, it's basically like, did I mask anything? No, I just extracted the color because I knew that uh, I needed to have that lighter color for the wash. Now, if let's say, well, you know, you didn't get it in the first, you know, the first pass, that's okay. You can always take your uh, any paper towel, um, wet it, spray the paper or in the area that you want to lighten, and you can actually scrub out just with regular, you know, household paper towels. Um, it's not a, it's not a big thing to do, uh, but you can definitely you won't get it back to white, but you get it light enough to create that color contrast and keeping that color within that shape as chromatic, as intense as it can be without being affected by that underwash. All right, so having said all that, uh, as you can see, I'm getting into painting more details. I switched down to a little number four brush, um, and I'm just kind of erratically painting these little shapes in. Now, I could have used a, uh, a rigger brush, uh, but I think I have a little bit more control with the number four, uh, basically it's a, it is a mop brush, but it's small. But I'm also, I'm also getting some little tiny um, darks inside. Um, there's all sorts of things going on. Now that lighter tone against the water line there. Um, did I use white? No, I didn't. I actually, I just used yellow directly from the tube and the sap green. So it was very, very thick. 
So that's not cheating. We're not using any whites. We're just using the color that we mixed um, directly out of the tube. So, um, so it was quite opaque, and that will give us a little bit of contrast. Um, but, you know, there's no shame in using a little white if you need to, to get an effect. Um, I mean, I always think about John Singer Sargent when he switched over to watercolors um, kind of later in his career, and he did it for fun, so he really didn't follow any rules. He did what he wanted to do, and he did whatever he needed to do to create the effect. So um, if you study some of his uh, watercolors, uh, more specifically the ones in Venice, you can see like these shapes and things that are, uh, for instance, there's a painting he did of some boats just moored, and you see these light, like these effects of water hitting the side of the, um, of the bow, and um, you wonder how he got those, those shapes. Well, he actually used a crayon, uh, or I'm sorry, a candle, to uh, mask the white so that when he went over the paint, went over the wash, uh, or the area with a wash, um, what was left behind by the candle stayed white. So he pretty much used, um, if he had a um, liquid masking fluid at the time, chances are he would have used it. Um, but it wasn't available then. All right, so now um, here, we're just, now I'm just painting some of the rock shapes. Now, you're probably wondering, well, what was all the big deal? You went over it anyway. Well, that, little, that color is actually warmer than the water. So uh, it is separate from, from what it was before, uh, meaning that it's not, if I put blue over that, you can see on the edges how dark it got, and it almost turned green because it was a, sort of like a warm tone over a blue, and I didn't want my rock to be green. Um, you know, unless the rocks and the, if the reference picture uh, suggested it, then yeah, I probably would have just painted it green or just not wiped it out. Okay, so this is the final painting. Um, I apologize, the rocks, uh, my camera kind of ran out of memory the last um, few seconds of the video, or minutes rather, but um, they're not too hard to paint. You just, uh, I started with a dark and painted a few little half tones. That was about it. Uh, so there it is. Um, hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. Um, bye now.